Good day and welcome back to the Asperger's Growth YouTube channel with your host, Mr. Thomas Henley. Today, I'm coming at you with another dating Q&A video, autistic dating Q&A video. I have to preface this video by saying that yesterday I recorded, I think about six or seven videos and I had some real issues with um, the camera not focusing or the the videos getting cut off. So I had like a proper meltdown yesterday over it. It was re really, really tough. I managed to get myself to the gym, so everything was all right, but it was still um, very difficult. So we're going for another take today. <laughs> we're going for it. I think I've done this, done this video about three times. So hopefully practice makes perfect, but if not, who knows? If you do want to have your question answered or your story um, answered, please pop it down in the comments and I will try and get on it for the next video. Hopefully in one take this time. We have a neurotypical woman here who has written in, what can lived ones do when someone is so stuck in denial that they are pushing everyone out of their lives? That is the question. My husband is serving me divorce papers tomorrow and thinks I'm simply unhinged and abusive. I've learned so much about autism and PDA, pathological demand avoidance, yet him pushing me out of my home and self-protecting, leaving me homeless and unemployed has been hard to understand. There are so many spouses like me that only wish they could help and yet are shut out or withdrawn from to the point at which they are discarded. It's like being tied to a chair and being forced to watch my husband drown. I have no idea what to do. He regrettably doesn't remember his own actions, but only remembers my reactive reactiveness before I understood what was going on. Then, According to him, I was too nice and I'm labelling him by understanding he needs time and space. The survival rate at this point of denial is very low once things start to slow down and a person sees and a person sees what they've chosen when not feeling well. I'm truly concerned and yet have no way forward. Right, very, very heavy topic on this one. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to run with the assumption that, you know, all of this, I'm going to take this as uh, face value. I realize that, you know, in the best scenario, I would know what the relationship is like, know what the dynamic is like, know the husband and also know you in this situation. So I'm just going off the, the assumption that everything in here is, is kind of true and is a true sort of overview of what's going on. And I think, you know, the, the issue in this situation is that, you know, you, you've done good. You've, tr you've tried to learn a lot about autism and PDA. I, I hope that you've looked into the experiential side of things, not just the research papers and the um, blogs from, from different autism organizations, actual autistic people talking about their experiences, which I'm, I'm pretty sure you have done, uh, considering the fact that you've, you've come over to my channel, you know, going back to the issue here, I think in a, in a lot of cases, in a lot of NT and D relationships, there are a multitude of different miscommunications. And when a particular person being diagnosed or undiagnosed, suspected of being autistic, etc., doesn't really know much about themselves and autism and how they interact with the world. Know more about how neurotypicals function and communicate and perceive and feel. We talk a lot about this concept called double empathy, where it's quite hard for autistic people to empathize with neurotypicals and vice versa. So neurotypicals struggling to really understand and grasp what being autistic is about. And this is, you know, a, re a real issue. If if one, one side doesn't pick up the slack, um, it leads to a lot of 
annoyance and arguments and um, difficult conversations. And when you're in a situation where communication is not open and it's not vulnerable and it's not um, with that sort of growth, a relationship growth mindset, it can lead to a lot of difficulties, um, a lot of emotions flying about everywhere, <laughs> um, as in this situation. I think it's, you know, it, it must be really hard for you. I, I don't know whether your your husband, ex-husband was diagnosed autistic or whether he knew about it, but I can imagine that it's quite hard for you in this situation, not only because he's, he's decided to, you know, divorce, get a divorce, but also because he, he does seem to be struggling quite a bit and it seems like, I mean, at least from your perspective, that it's a really bad idea for, for him and for you. I think that maybe this denial, this um, reactivity, this this sort of um, statement of a serving serving you divorce papers. I think I think the best way to put it is like this: we, growing up as an aut autistic people, we have a lot of experience with interactions with neurotypicals. Neurotypicals, not not so much. It's like. If you're 1% of the population or 2%, you're going to have more experience with the 99, 98%. Whereas the opposite way around, some people don't even have experience of that 1%, 2%. And, you know, over time, through for, for, for all the statistics that have been published around quality of life for autistic people and also um, the testo testimonials from a lot of autistic people have shown that we have a lot of early life childhood trauma and we, we develop a lot of coping mechanisms to try and overcome that. Obviously, there's something going on here. <laughs> These bad experiences can sometimes manifest as negative defense mechanisms, pushing people out, um, not feeling like you're really a part of society, putting on a mask for people around you, even your partner, even your family things of that nature. And it's only until a certain sticking point that, you know, we realize, okay, right, things are not going well. I need to understand more about myself and autism because of this, this horrible or difficult event that's happening. And it may, may that may be the case if he hasn't looked into autism prior to this. Despite all the possible reasons for this kind of behavior that I could try and think about, I think the most important thing is to address you, to address your your reaction to this situation. The thing the thing is, um, something that happens quite quite often in autistic ND ND NT relationships, autistic non autistic, um, is the non autistic person tends to take on a little bit of a a caring role in the relationship and it's not it's not exactly a good thing you know clarity of communication and trying to understand uh where your your perceptions and thoughts and feelings and ideas sort of clash due to that that neurological difference you know it, it only gets you so far i think at, at a certain point you have to think about the fact that this this person is not is not a child it's not they're not a a person that you need to care for um in that way so i i would definitely say that i i understand and it's it's important to go and and try and process and understand situations but really what you need to be doing is putting less focus on him and putting more focus on yourself you know you need to find somewhere to live you need to um try and find a job that suits you best or, or something to tide you over while you look for something better. Do some work on yourself, do hobbies, socialize. You need to take your husband as an independent adult. Don't make excuses f for, for being autistic. I mean, from the complexity of this situation, it doesn't seem like this, everything in this would be a miscommunication. You know, at some point you've got to say, Look, this other human being has 
wanted to, is wanting to divorce me, has kicked me out of their place, I'm homeless and unemployed, would someone that I love and someone that I care for do that to me in an ideal world? Whether they're autistic or not, probably not. They, they, have, they have made a statement around this that they don't want you to be a part of their life or in their life and you need to respect that. And it may come it may come to a point where they realize just exactly how bad they've screwed up and come back and say, hey, look, I'm really sorry and all of that. But for the time being, you know, you need to put that out of your head because this person has, has made a very negative decision towards yourself. Doesn't matter if they're autistic, they've made that decision as an independent adult, and you need to respect that fact. Don't wash over it with all the autism related things. You are in a relationship. You married someone who is autistic, but is also an, an adult and you need to treat them that way. You know, I, I hope that I'm not coming across too, too aggressive in that way or too, <laughs> too like, oh, you do this, like, don't think about it like that. But I'm, I'm really trying to get the point across that you, you don't have to wash over or give autistic people a free pass if they are treating you badly. That is that is the main message here. I'm really sorry that this is a situation that you have to go through and I wish I could fix it. I wish I could come in and, and try and look at all the miscommunications, but you know, it just it just seems that this is is his decision and it may screw up his life and it may screw up your life for the time being but you can you can still grow out of that and he's made this assertion you you split apart you need to go your own way and reassert yourself back into the world as you not as part of this partnership as you that's what he wants you respect that you go your own way Apologies if any of this came across in the wrong way or came across in a strange way. I have recorded this video about three times already, um, but I hope that it's kept, come across as clear as it did the first time. Brain's not really on it today. Communication skills and things of that nature, not, not too on it today. But I hope you have enjoyed this video and I hope that you found this helpful. Maybe if someone else is going through a similar situation maybe this this video has helped you in that if you would like to be a part of the next video you want me to answer your question or query or story please post it down in the comments or go over to my instagram page and dm me it'll be asperger's growth and you know if you if you still if you don't have instagram and you you know you don't don't want to comment on youtube send me an email you can go through my website thomasenley.co.uk send me an email there i will try and get on it as soon as and um yeah hope you've enjoyed this episode of dating or an autistic q a <laughs> really need to get that title right take care much love and i will see you in another episode very very soon see you later folks